technical depth, also called design depth or code depth, is a concept in software development, and it refers to the difference of time needed to implement some feature the easy or uh, usually the limited way, where you could use a bit less time, and the proper or the better approach that would usually take some longer time. So that difference is what's called technical depth. But that's the, the definition by Wikipedia. But what does that mean in real life? And what are consequences of having it? Here we have one system, let's say some web application. And uh, by definition, a system is made out of components working together. Probably some complex components. Here we have some databases, some servers, some communication modules, some uh, cryptography, some calculations, etc. So every component here has its place and its purpose in this system. Now, a new feature needs to be added. And usually it's a form of a simple button that will just do something uh, relatively simple. Say, send an email. And now our system does not completely support this functionality. So we would have to change quite a few components in order to support that. And this change would uh, take us, let's say, 10 hours. But since this is just a temporary uh, fix or maybe some minor feature or maybe something that might actually gain advantage over our competitors, something that is important and urgent to have and right now, the only option we can do is to basically bypass entire system and create a shortcut. This solution takes us only two hours of implementation because we are basically bypassing the entire system, right? There are no changes needed to existing modules. However, this quick fix in practice leaves us with about eight hours of technical depth. Fact is, we cannot make some functionality properly implemented in just four times less time than it's realistic. And all that without consequences. That just makes no sense. It's not possible to do something faster than it's possible to do it. Now, everybody agrees that this is a temporary fix and that it should be fixed properly one day. So we don't think about it. We don't even document it because we will soon replace it with a real proper fix, right? If the debt is repaid now, there are no interest on it. And it can be still fixed in these eight hours. But as luck would have it, this quick fix is not perfect yet. We need some additional functionality that we already have uh, in our application. Let's say something from security and computational modules. Since we are going around the entire system, our only option is to copy parts of the code from our existing modules in order to have full functionality, right? And this solves our problem, but it also adds a few more hours of the work time as well. And probably some interest to the depth itself, because now there is more work that needed to clean this up when the time comes. If this would be fixed right at this point, again, there would be no big issues with this approach. However, as every system is alive and it changes and evolves, a new features are added, uh, for example, some shopping cart, some additional functionality. Fixes like this are easily forgotten, because unlike real debt, it's not reminding us that it's there, it's invisible. That's especially the case in startups where the situation is usually ship or sink, which means that new features need to be added rapidly. And this quick fix is actually working just fine, so it's very easy to forget the technical debt, because again, unlike uh, the real money, the real debt, it's invisible. So unless it shows some effects, nobody thinks about it. And as the time goes by and our system grows even more, some part of, uh, say, security module, for example, needs to be changed again. And now it requires double maintenance. Now we need to change that code here in the main security module, but we also need to change it here inside of our copy. So there is twice amount of effort. That means double maintenance, double testing, double everything, because what we now have is a system that runs in parallel with our existing system. This over here is our main system, but this part over here is some workaround, which basically works around our system, right? And we need to maintain both of them. And it adds a lot of time to the maintenance of the system. It also opens more possibilities to introduce more bugs. As the system is no longer centralized, we don't have a centralized control over everything that's happening in our application. And now when a new functionality comes, let's say we need to implement some external email provider because our system has grown and we need some better uh, functionality, we would estimate, say, this to, say, three hours of work because it's easy. It's just plug and play, play right? Well, not quite. It will actually take us at least double time because we've forgotten about our quick fix, right? And now the debt becomes unavoidable. And just like money debt, it comes with interest. And this is the point of no return now. From this point, the quality of the entire system goes either up or it goes down. We can either repay our debt now or we can continue to add interest on it. If we choose to keep this quick fix around and make a quick fix on top of the quick fix, we would need to duplicate this feature. So we are basically agreeing that our system 
we'll have another system in parallel. And uh, we are in real life going to struggle with this forever. We will always have to do twice the work for every change and every new feature, and we will never have centralized system with full control over it. And we will never going to be able to add new features or implement changes quickly. Which means that our product and our company even could become the same as our largest competitor. Slow, full of bugs and looking like some website from 90s because any future change is super expensive and unreliable. So this is a crucial point in development time that needs to be recognized. Chances are by the time we've reached this stage, developers in company might have changed and no one really knows why we have this quick fix in the first place. Why is there some system going around the existing system? And also the interest rate comes into play because the 8 hours that we saved in the beginning can now easily double or even more times and on top of that depth, we actually have spent the time on implementing all these fixes, right? So the 8 hours that we saved in the beginning, we have at least 30 or 50 hours to pay back now. And in reality, nobody can actually estimate how much time is needed to implement these fixes, to clean all this up. However, not all is lost. If this would be the only single fix around our application, no big deal, we just dedicate time to it, we fix it, and life is still good. The chances are, however, that once quick fix becomes a practice, the system will become full of fixes on top of the fixes. And we have a huge depth that almost becomes impossible to fix. Meantime, our clients and competitors are noticing that we are struggling to deliver new features and uh, fix existing ones. So we now have to hire more people thinking that that might solve the problem. But if you hire more people, then it is you who needs to educate them about the system and you need to help them get to speed and understand this system. And honestly, no one really know how it works anymore. But the project always continues to grow and uh, just a button comes again and again and again. And at one point it's maybe easier to just remove everything, untangle this and start from scratch because the system is almost impossible to maintain. But we have clients that are already using the system, so that's not really an option. Regardless of its state, the system is as it is and we have people using it and we cannot just delete everything and start from scratch. However, we still struggle because the system is not in a great shape the future changes are expensive or maybe impossible or they're taking incredible long time. And anyway, if we would even to start from scratch, what do you think would happen if the way we are working is the same? Would you ever make a quick fix and never forget about it? So what can we do now? How can we prevent this? Never make a quick fix in our life? Well, a few things to note first. As the real life debt, money debt, the technical debt is not always necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we just have to loan some money or in our case the time from the future so that we can survive today. Some strategic decisions have to be made. But if we make this uh, debt uh, deliberate, a sort of exception to the rule and not a default way of working, of course we can do a quick fix. More than often that's a reality of life. But uh, we should make sure that it doesn't spiral all out of control. We also have the responsibility to consider the long-term well-being of a project as well, not just the solution for today. So if it's done deliberately, it can benefit the company, just like the loan from the bank, say, or from the investor. It can get us over those difficult periods when speed is crucial, but it had to be repaid, just like real-life money debt. And also we need to make sure that it is a real debt, because sometimes an easier solution is actually much better than the more complex one. So we need to make sure that it is actually going to leave us with a technical debt, or maybe it's just an easier and better solution overall. And please note that a messy code is not a technical debt, it's just a messy code, so don't write messy code at all. But our best course of action that we can do is to actually educate stakeholders and people around us as to why technical debt is a dangerous thing if it's not repaid. Why, what are the, its consequences? So make sure to share this video to everybody in your company. No, I'm just kidding, or not. But by making shortcuts, we are in essence bypassing the entire system and making a system in parallel to our existing system. And that is never a good uh, long-term solution. So make sure that people understand and even possibly plan for the technical debt to be repaid. So if you have a slower period in development, where you see the tempo might be a bit slower, that is an excellent point to go into some maintenance mode. Or if possible, plan for such a period of time, let's say a week or two in a, mo in a month or in a quarter, to go into maintenance mode so that the debt is actually repaid and the code is cleaned up. So in my experience, the easiest way to actually repay all the debt is to a, B, C, always be cleaning. We can repay our debt in small portions at a time. 
So every time you open a file, refactor it and improve the code in, the, in that file method by method, class by class, line by line. Simplify logic, split methods, make the code more, more readable and always leave the code you're working on cleaner than when you have found it. So that way, as you're going around, you're constantly cleaning and at one point you will get to a decent quality code. Also, try to introduce and practice code reviews and maybe change the work methodology. And in general, focus on the code quality uh, rather than just pumping out functionality and features. At least for some period of time until the most of the debt is repaid and you can breathe and you see that you have the full control over the application. Also try some proven workflows, uh, maybe agile or automated testing, continuous integration, etc. etc. So that is the technical depth. It's the process of intentionally destabilizing our entire application by making some special rules that bypass our entire system in order to implement some feature much quicker. If it's left unpaid, it zooms comes back with the interest. So make sure that your boss or client is aware of this next time he asks for uh, it's just a button, can't you just make it work feature. See you in the next video.